Hi and welcome to our second episode about our DG Hydro project. My name is Stefan Komonik and I'm co-founder at Hakom Time Series. In the last episode, we met all the project leaders of all four partners. They introduced themselves and told us about their expectations from the project. They have highest expertise in hydropower, in sensor applications, in time series management, and in visualization and numeric simulations. And they explained that the project aims at enabling predictive maintenance of hydropower plants, a topic that is most relevant in our times. Now exactly one year later, we are going to report on the project again. And therefore, we are going to meet Eduard Dujak and his team at the hydropower lab of the Vienna University of Technology. We have the unique opportunity to meet him and his team as they are working on the test facility. Hello, Stefan. Welcome to the Theovin Science Center. Thank you, Edi. We are located here since 2017, since 1906 till 2016. This lab was situated at the main building at Karlsplatz, Theovin. And you see, hydropower has a long tradition in Vienna. What are you guys doing here, actually? We use this facility here for education and research. On the one hand, uh, we uh, teach our students teaching purposes, and on the other hand, we generate uh, experimental data for our research projects, like our ongoing DJ Hydro project. Okay, so let's go inside and have a look. The Institute for Energy System and Thermodynamics conducts specifically research projects in the field of thermal engineering, electricity production, and energy systems. Here in the front, you have diverse test tricks of the thermal engineering department. My colleagues conduct research projects on innovative heat storage. And altogether, we try to push as hard as possible the green energy solution. That's how it should be. What is back there? In this part, we have the hydraulic machinery lab. And we run and operate uh, pumps and turbine test tricks for research and education. Here on the left hand side we have uh, the pump test rig. We use it for research purposes, uh, mainly in cavitation. What is cavitation? Cavitation actually is a physical phenomena where the liquid pressure drops below the vapor pressure, uh, creating bubbles, and these bubbles can damage the machine. So it's like uh, cooking water, but instead of uh, increasing the temperature, you decrease the pressure. Exactly. Here behind we have the belt and tech trick. Uh, uh, the principle of the energy conversion is like in a water wheel, but we have a different runner. Runner is a special geometry, it's called a belt and bucket. We use this uh, belt and test trick for investigation in runner, injector, casing geometry, and uh, for teaching purposes as well, and operational modes. And here in the back, we have our biggest machine, that's the universal turbine test trick. This unit is able to simulate high head machines or even pump storage power plants. Consider on the right hand tank as the mountain reservoir and the left tank as the reservoir in the valley and the machine representing the power plant in the middle. And in this test rig, where does all the water come from? This is a closed loop cycle test rig and this cycle is supplied by two feeding pumps in the basement and these feeding pumps uh, are able to provide up to 16 bars and to 500 liter per second and are supplied by a reservoir of about 500 cubic meter beneath us. Mm -hmm. And how do you actually operate it? We can run this test rig in turbine mode. So the water comes here from the right hand side, from the upper reservoir, crosses the spiral case, the casing, the runner itself as a key component, flows through the draft tube, this gray part, to the lower reservoir. Yeah? It's in turbine mode. If we have too much electricity in the electrical grid, we use this machine also as a pump. So we can store water from the lower reservoir to the upper reservoir, so from left to, to the right hand. Okay, let's turn it on. Ah, okay, let's go. <laughs> yes. 
Now we are in the control room here. From here we can operate the test trick. In which way is a power plant operated nowadays with all this PV and wind generation being so volatile? You have to imagine through this increasing share of renewable power of wind and solar, as you mentioned, we get power fluctuations to the electric mm -hmm. grid. Those fluctuations are compensated normally by pump storage power plants. Okay, and what does that actually mean for these machines? Those machines have to run not always in the best efficiency point and those regions with the smoothest flow. So we have to switch also to part load or deep part load regions and so-called off-design mm -hmm. operational mm -hmm. points. What does actually happen in these other regions? Uh, in these other regions we, we get power fluctuations, we get flow phenomena mm -hmm. which are unfavorable to the machine and uh, causing dynamic stresses to the runner and to the entire structure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And why? In the end do we need model-sized machines? Model-sized machines have the advantage to get access. In real power plants mm -hmm. we miss sometimes access to those parts we want to investigate, mm -hmm. they are covered by concrete. And uh, yeah, here we have the possibility to visualize the flow phenomenon. Mm -hmm. Cool, so now I'm excited. So let's start the test rig and have a look at the flow. Perfect, let's go. So here we can actually see the phenomena, but in a real power plant, how can we determine the vortex? In a real power plant, we need sensors, actually. We can use for a static pressure, such pressure transducers. They are mounted in pipes, they are mounted to the casing. In case of such dynamic phenomena causing uh, pressure fluctuations, we need more specific pressure transducers which are mounted into the casing actually to be able to catch this flow. Mm -hmm. And in a real power plant, are there any other sensors? Sure, we have more phenomena to catch. We need more sensors, for example, accelerators to catch the vibrations or strain gauges to measure mechanical stresses and more. So we've seen that renewable energy causes the hydropower plants to run at modes that can actually damage the machinery. So that's exactly the right time when we should talk about our next episode. Exactly. Because that's when we want to take a look at this experimental setup in real life. And to do this, we're going to visit a real ingenious place. Right, Eddie? Yes, of course. We'll visit a real power station of an Austrian operator in the Alps to see those sensors mounted to real machine and this incredible data amount acquired. But if you thought that those were real daredevil flight scenes, you haven't seen how to fly through a real hydropower plant yet. I hope you'll join us again. Thanks for watching and see, see you, you soon. soon.